hope you're hungry because you're listening to Everybody Eats. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Everybody Eats. Man, it feels like it's been a minute, but things have been good. A little bit busy. Sorry for the late episode. Negroes didn't have Wi-Fi, so <laughs> we're back. We are back. So what's up, Edom? How you doing? What's good? What's good? I'm uh, chilling. That's what's up. That's what's up. So today, uh, just Edom and I, um, no guest today. So we are going to cover some current events. So it'll be a nice episode talking about what's going on in the world because if you've been paying attention to any sort of news, you know things have been popping off, right? So before that, make sure you check us out on all platforms, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, we are on there. Want to say thank you to all our supporters, domestic and abroad, and had a chance to check out um, our listener location. We got some listeners in Thailand now. So whoever you are out in Thailand, shout out to you. Thank you for listening to the podcast. So let's get into today's topic. So of course, the biggest one that we have to talk about is the coronavirus, that COVID-19 that's been getting the world crazy. I haven't seen Social media in the world this popping off since the Popeye's chicken. For real, yo. This is like <laughs> like for real, bro. Like the last thing that had That's people going fact. nuts was this Popeye's chicken. So the coronavirus, if you haven't heard, which you I mean it's been around for months, so you should have heard. But if you haven't heard, it's an upper respiratory viral disease. Um they say that it started in China in the city of Wuhan, that is the epicenter, but it has since spread around the globe there are cases around the world um they have unfortunately there are some confirmed deaths around the world united states i believe the latest number is 12 right Eden? yep 12, the about united states. 12 confirmed literally deaths. as of like a couple minutes ago as to be honest. Point. all right so that's the most updated number 12 confirmed deaths but we are not a news network so um how does this tie into business well if you've been paying attention to business stock market companies uh this has caused a lot of reaction one of the biggest reactions last week was in the stock market if you've been paying attention also um which may be a little bit suspicious the stock market generally has been at an all-time high and last week it tanked right so because of um, just fear, uh, shareholders and traders, um, they've been pulling out their stock. So um, the, the market was tanking to like its lowest point in, in years. Um, so people are going crazy. My 401ks, what's happening oh, to my investments? thousand points, bro. Yeah, it dropped a like a, points, in like bro. one day, right? Yeah. Yeah, it dropped like a thousand points in one day. So people have been going nuts. But if you are an investor, and shout out to my man's Wall Street Trapper who's been posting, right? So if you're if you're an investor, if you're trading, you know that in times like this, this is when you get into stocks, right? Buy, Things buy, 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 buy. They all sell, right? So when you see them tanking like that, right? It don't don't just hesitate and be like, how ah, is going on? No, this is when when things start tanking like that. That's when you want to go in, swoop, buy as many shares as you can at that company you've been looking looking uh, to buy. If you see that their share price is dropping, now is when you scoop up and then naturally the market's always going to correct itself and then naturally it's always going to go upward. So you buy when it's low and then you hold on to it till it gets back. Um, so that sounds that's, messed up, but uh, you know, that, that's the I'm game. Here. Country's uh, demise could end up being your profit. Your profit. I'm weak. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to put it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. But I mean, that's that's like I said, that's just the game. That's that's the market. Um, this is human nature. That's how people react. Um, but uh, I haven't really invested in a little while, so I personally didn't really take too much advantage of it. But um, I still post. If you follow our page, we've been posting. So if you are um, a, a a trader, if you do have stocks, if you're looking to get into stocks, this is a very interesting time to get in. If you see that the market's going down, this this is a good time for you to say, hey, this money I've set aside, let me try and buy a couple of stocks because right now if they're low, uh, you're getting at a good price before it goes back up. So um, that's just words of advice and that's just some news. Um, but besides that, it's been affecting a bunch of other things like 
Um, oh, and, and back to stocks, there was a uh, Clorox, Clorox, uh, like sh the stock price like shot up because everyone is trying to buy Clorox wipes and Clorox bleach and all that stuff. So I think that's like one of the few everywhere companies. Gone. You can't find it anywhere, man. Like, oh, like I went to stop and shop today, yo. And, and I just, I personally, I'm good on, I'm, I mean, I could be better, but you know, I'm, I'm, you know, like decent on sanitizer and Clorox wipes I'm more than good on but um I just walk past and it's just the whole empty section on the shelves bro you know you see workers just like staring where the hand sanitizer used to be <laughs> and it's just it's ridiculous people are really like I don't know people are really freaking out I personally think it's a whole um a lot of like miscommunication is going on misinformation is going on yeah you know I have all my group chats like they blow up like once a day about this. You hear people, you know, getting attacked and uh, uh, discriminated or like being treated prejudicially just because they're Asian. You know, it's kind of it's kind of messed up. Yeah, my but, mom was telling me the same thing. Like she was telling me her coworkers were doing the same thing on the on um uh, on the bus on the train, and that's like that's it's really it's really foul. But um, uh, unfortunately, yeah, bro, I mean, being African, I. I couple years back when Ebola made a quick comeback like I got I got a lot of the jokes I got a whole lot of I got a whole lot of you know yeah, crap yeah. put on myself for just for being just for being that nationality so I mean my heart goes out to y'all um I personally won't be doing that but <laughs> I do I do feel I do feel you guys and I don't approve of it at all yeah, yeah, it's but, uh, fine. my mom was saying the same to, thing about yeah. cholera when cholera was in Haiti. But yeah, back to the the hand sanitizer. Um, one big thing is that it, uh, this disease has affected the price of hand sanitizer. If you go on Amazon, because I know you said you did it yesterday, I was on Amazon yesterday as well. If you go on Amazon, you have bottles of hand sanitizer going for like a hundred dollars, right? And like that's absolutely nuts. Obviously, it's like supply and demand, but like that is ridiculous. Why there should bro, be, bro? You like, not find the normal price for it. Yeah, and like, like I said, there was there was like a five pack of the scented ones. That's what I saw, and that was for like maybe like fifteen bucks or something like that. Maybe it was like fifteen to twenty dollars, but still, that was like the only thing that was reasonably priced. Everything else was like a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars for bottles of hand sanitizer, which is which is ridiculous. If and you I, really look, like, if you took a look right now on Amazon, you'll see. They have their store brand, you know, <clears throat> that's like, I don't think they can really mess with the price of that or whatever. Yeah. But then you go check the other sellers, you take a real good look, you see people, oh, this is currently like not there. You see people trying to literally charge you between like 30, 60 to like 120 something for yeah. not even more than a four pack of Purell. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. truthfully, it's just a lot of people who probably have a whole bunch of extra hand sanitizers in their house and they making just, an Amazon account mm -hmm. trying to hop in and, and come 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 make some quick cash, which I respect, but are you for real? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I still I still have the tab open from yesterday, bro. So yeah, Purell is like pack of two going for seventy dollars. Seventy dollars for what? two things of hand sanitizer. There's this one Purell, like twelve hundred milliliters, sixty bucks. Like it's it's ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. There's a four pack of Purell, twelve hundred liters each, going for a hundred and eighty dollars. What? Like, <laughs> like I don't know. But that's 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 just crazy. Um, I saw an article today that they I think the Fed was actually looking into that, like uh, the price jacking of that, and like seeing if that I guess that's legal or if there was any like scheming anything behind that, but. Um, that's just like a, ridiculous, man. Yeah, but like that's just another thing that the coronavirus has been affecting, right? And then not only that, um, airline flights. So if um, I know, uh, just on like social media, I've been getting like a lot of like deals that a lot of airlines they're losing money because people either don't want to fly, they don't trust them. But a lot of airline flights are actually have deals on Twitter. Someone said they found a round trip to Hawaii for two hundred dollars. I don't know if that was cap, but. Two hundred dollars for a round trip to Hawaii, like I'm about to go look right now. Like I'm gonna start taking my days off for two hundred dollars to go to a round trip. So um, I know that's been that's been going. And then even in the workforce, like you know, around the industry, I know in my job, like there have been um, talks of companies doing extended work from homes, 
right? So like companies um, being able to work remotely, but then there are also a lot of jobs that can't work remotely, right? So there's been, it's been affecting, you know, the economy like that. Um, there's been in Italy, right? We, uh, Italy, they're uh, starting to do, they're about to uh, have sporting events with no fans. So they're going to... No fans. Yeah. Long. Do you remember how long it was for? It was for like the rest of the... Until to, to April 3rd. Uh, I saw that was the date I saw until April third for the next month. So Third. that's like it's it's affecting everything. And speaking of sports, even the Olympics, they're debating about um, pushing back the Olympics because of that. And they said that'd be the first yeah. time that'd be the first time pretty much since World War Two that they've had to either like postpone or either ban. Well, but World War Two, I think they they I didn't have the Olympics at all. But that was because it was war. But now it isn't war. So. Um, yeah, we find we find a disease. It's biological warfare, yeah, it's bro. Bi- <laughs> yeah, true. It's biological warfare, but um, it's it's been crazy. And then even James Bond, right? James Bond movie that was supposed to come out in April, I believe. Um, it's been pushed to November, pushing way back to November, which I'm tight because I wanted to see the movie too. Like this is Daniel Craig's last movie, bro. Like I was really looking forward to it, but. Um, I've never seen a James Bond movie, but you know what? what? I got more time to catch up. You're buggy. Okay. I've what seen up? probably like like ten minutes of Octopussy or Goldfinger or oh, come whatever. Come on, come on. Nah, you gotta go check those out. Daniel Craig never does a good seen job. James Bond. Never seen the Bourne trilogy. Never seen Kill Bill. Never seen Good Day. Right, just, just stop. 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 <laughs> but. But yeah, man, that's just, that's the update on the coronavirus. So um, it's affecting a lot of the industries. And I think one thing that I saw this week also on social media, um, some guy I follow who invests in real estate. So he was saying one thing he loves about real estate is that regardless of um, how the stock market is doing, like, and even how this disease is going around, like real estate is always a still great place to invest because people still going to need to buy homes. You know what I mean? So um, people still need to buy and sell homes and rent houses and do all that stuff. So, um, he was just speaking about, um, the surety of real estate and how that it's, um, pretty much always going to be there. I guess that was his argument. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been affecting everything. So I think, uh, honestly, you just stay aware of it. Um, when it comes to like these like prices and how it's affecting these different companies, like hey, like I said, if you're if you're a trader, if you're an investor, look for opportunities to to now invest. Look for opportunities to buy and sell stocks, because you know there could be money made out of it. And it kind of sounds foul in a little way, but like not in a you know not trying to like you know take advantage or anything like that. But that's just that's just the real world. That's how it is, right? So um, yeah. This is a business podcast, so if you an entrepreneur podcast, right? So, um, we were joking at work, like you know, someone should start making like customized like face masks because you know how they've been selling out. So we're like, yo, like if someone just took face masks and just designed them, right? Like that'd be a pretty dope business. And I'm like, yo, that'd be pretty cool because people are buying them like crazy. So you might as well look cool. Hey, that's an idea for one of y'all. That's pretty game. So <laughs> do with that. Do what you will with that. Whole new business idea. Yeah, for real. Now, but above all, like I really stress staying informed. Very, very informed. I've seen so much like fake news being spread. Literally earlier today, someone sent me a screenshot article of like one of the professors at my college having corona and he died and his funeral was like the 23rd of last month and I was like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. nah, bro. Nah, like, the school would definitely send us an email about that. We would have heard about it. We went up in the school already. So, uh, the biggest thing is just like, just stay informed. Stay informed. You say, like, you know, right, when you trade, you gotta stay informed. When you're dealing with this, stay informed. Don't like, don't believe everything you hear. People are just hopping on this just to make just so what it makes news, right? I mean, like you mentioned, like while we were on the phone earlier, basically, like, what about the flu? Oh, I was saying earlier, like, thousands of people a year die from the flu, and they have a like they have a vaccine for it, you know. And like every year, I think 
I think the average number is about like nine, ten thousand. But I googled it the other day, and they're like, so far this flu season, about like nine thousand people died from the flu, and they have a vaccine for it. So I'm not saying like I was, that was just my argument in the sense of like. Yeah, coronavirus is serious, but like, don't listen to or don't get over worried or over panic. Um, because if you look at the numbers, like realistically, like, you know, it's it's not as crazy as they make it seem. Um, but obviously, it has flu-like symptoms. It's yeah, like it mimics the flu. So yeah, like, yeah, it's a big deal. It's it's like really serious, but you know, don't let it consume every waking moment of everything you do. Just do. It, it just take extra precautions, which you should, like, it's really sad that being clean isn't the norm or, like, you know, like, not dirty. I've seen a lot of people on the bus sneeze, ask, sneeze into their hands after touching the bars and then proceed to go touch their face or pick their nose, which yeah, is disgusting. Nice. You know, of course, I'm way more diligent now to avoid getting any types of disease or sickness. So, I mean, it personally it irks me to see that, especially with what's going on, but... Just in general, you know, that's dirty, that's disgusting. You know, your face is going to break out, you're going to catch something, you know. It's just, it's not cool. So, please, be clean, wash your hands. Wash your hands, bro, just wash your hands, no need, like, <laughs> if you can manage to do all that, then you're fine. Yeah, yeah. You're fine, you won't catch anything. Just be healthy. I'm not healthy, be clean. Be so, clean. <laughs> sanitary. Be sanitary, be, clean, be hygienic, honestly. But, yeah, like you said, like, don't don't let it consume you right um whatever if you have a business if you don't have a business right like you have to stay stay focused what you're doing you still gotta live life right you still gotta live like i said you just still gotta live life you know what i mean you can't let it let it stop you so obviously be cautious be aware just like just like with anything but you know don't don't let it don't let all the news and all the hype stop you from doing what you gotta do all right so that's our take on the coronavirus so Recap, be safe, be healthy. If you're looking to get into um, buying and selling stocks, this is a really great time, right? If you're looking to travel, take advantage of any deals. Stock up on hand sanitizer for a reasonable price. And hey, maybe if you have extra hand sanitizer, you can flip it. <laughs> but do it, do it moderately or do it, you know, don't be greedy with it. But don't be slimy about yeah, it. Yeah, don't be slimy and nice, sell a bro. bottle for a buck fifty. Lies, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like don't sell bottles for $150. Like, don't don't do that. But um, yeah, that's 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 the take on the coronavirus. So we'll take a quick break here and then we'll go into our quote of the day. All right, it's segment two of the Everybody Eats podcast. So on today's episode, I have the quote. Uh, this is something I've been I've been hearing all week, um, and it's just it's just been sticking with me, right? So, uh, Edom, you ready? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, the quote is: "Only thing worse than death is a regret-filled coffin." so many times i know you have i know you have for ah. sure <laughs> so i'll just repeat it only thing the only thing worse than death is a regret filled coffin Oh, did a guy say it? Uh, yeah. Um, no. Just guess. You'll we'll probably get it right. Obama? No. <laughs> I feel like Obama's our number one. Yeah, yeah. Comes to guesses, so <laughs> we should make a clip. Um, not Gary V. <laughs> no. Not Obama, not Gary V, not Nipsey also. Um Can I get a hint on profession? Nah. It would kinda give it away. Oh You got thirty Kobe? seconds. No, not Kobe. Kobe. No. Nah. Um No, I'm it. That's it. Alright. That is 
from the urban poet Jermaine Cole off of Crunch Time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like I thought you would have got it. Jay. So for those, yeah. So that is. Sick. Yeah, you are sick. <laughs> it's a J. Cole that's lyric. Crazy. It's a J. Cole lyric off of Crunch Time. So it goes again. The only thing worse than death is a regret filled. Wow, I'm, I'm salty. Yeah, yeah he's salty. Me. So, <laughs> um, but no, like that quote, it, it really, like, I've heard it. I heard it multiple times this week, and it just keeps, like, ringing in my head of just, like, obviously, like, what I guess what it means directly, right? So, you know, you don't. Regret is the worst thing. I feel like regret is the worst thing in the world. That's what I personally believe. I feel like there's no point in, even if I've made a mistake in the past, there's no point in sitting here and be like, yo, I regret. Because that feeling can eat you up and that feeling will do more harm than good. So I, I try not to regret any decisions. There are some things that, you know, obviously there's certain, there are certain decisions I maybe wish I haven't made or I could have done better, but I'm not going to look back at it, back at it as regret just look at it more of a lesson. And there's just the matter of perspective. So that's just one. But then two, um, in, in the song, how he, he's pretty much speaking about like chasing your dreams, right? And even when people aren't on your side or it seem like they're hating or it seems like things are even harder or impossible, um, pretty much just sticking with chasing your dreams and doing what you want to do because the only thing worse than death, right, is a regret feel coffee. And you don't want to die saying, I wish... I pursued this. I wish I tried that. Right. And it means a lot for me um, as an entrepreneur, someone, you know, with this podcast. Right. I have um, obviously my goal is to see it grow. Right. That's that's what I would like to do. Um, and sometimes just with like, any business or anything, like sometimes, you know, you wake up in the morning and you don't have the best feeling and you're like, you know, sometimes I don't want to do this. Right. Or sometimes it's hard. And sometimes you get those feelings of discouragement. It's natural with entrepreneurs. Right. It happens. Not everything is sunshine and rainbows. But, yeah. right, you have to remember that it's not, you know, it's, it's about the bigger picture, right? And remember, if you're, you have to remember what is your focus, right? Are you doing it because you want the attention, you want the hype, you want the, the clout? Or are you doing it because you love what you do and you love that value, right? So when you start to feel discouraged, when you start to feel, I don't know, when you start to feel like, ah, you know, this sucks, whatever, you have to remember what is the reason? Are you doing it because you love it? And if so, then, you know, you can put those thoughts of discouragement aside and just keep pushing through no matter what, right? Or if you're doing it because of clout, maybe you don't have as many followers as you want, then maybe you're going to give up, right? So um, I think that's just something that no matter what you do, no matter what your passion is, what your career, what your engagement, uh, your, sorry, um, your, your passion, your career, your, your, your job, whatever you're doing, your business, your hustle, Right? Make sure you do it wholeheartedly. Make sure you do it wholeheartedly and you pursue it because you don't want to come to the end of your life where maybe you don't have the health or the abilities or the tools and you look back and say, I should have taken advantage of it when I when I had the chance. Um, so, you know, that's another thing that motivates me to do what I do. I, I love doing this podcast and obviously some days are better than others, but on overall, just like the stock market, it always goes up, baby, right? So uh, overall, like I love it and everything is always positive. Yeah. So... You know, at the end of the day, you know, just because it takes a little dip here, you have to look at the overall scale. Overall, it's everything. Like I've been receiving a lot of love. I've been seeing a lot, a lot of good feedback. I've been meeting amazing people, right? And whatever your passion is, whether it's you know, whether you're my boy Car Hell and you're making your ginger lemonade, right, or you're my boys doing doing whatever, 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 whether you're ups or downs, you have to remember: Do you love doing it? And if so, then you just keep going. No matter no matter what the response is, so that's my little rant. I just I just really I just feel that quote because you know you just you don't ever want to look back and be like I I wish or I should have taken or I shouldn't have listened to that person when they were hating. You know, you never... guys yeah, haven't realized by yet. Bensky hates having a uh, regret and doubt. <laughs> it's a fact, yo. Really wants to be sure and confident in everything every single thing he does which is it's very funny to watch from it's, uh, outside looking in sometimes for, for me it's more of i like uh, my thing is like i like i like to just try things right like whether or not the response is good or bad i just want to be able to be like yo i tried it 
And that's kind of like my big thing, right? That's what kind of with the regret. Like, I don't want to be like, dang, dang. Like, there's some things that I like, I, I like maybe I procrastinate doing it. And when I start doing it, I'm like, yo, I should have just started this earlier. But just in general, when it comes to like starting like this podcast, it took me a while to finally start doing this podcast from when I first had the idea. Um, but then eventually I was like, yo, I have to do it because if I don't do it, I'm gonna literally, I'm gonna look back and be like, yo, like I really should have started. Right. So, and I like to, and you know, there's been ventures that I've started when it came to like Forex and stuff like that, that maybe I, I tried it out and I felt and I was like, you know what, this isn't for me. And then you just, you know, move on to the next thing. Right. And now I know, now I know that not nah, like Forex, I respect you. So all my Forex traders, right. Do you, do you, if you're making money, go eat. Everybody eats, right? Everybody eats B, right? So everybody eats, but you know, that's not for everybody. From me? Not everybody has the same taste. But you know, I found something that I love. I found something that I think that I'm good at, but I found something that I love doing and you know, stuck with it. So now I can I can say I started a podcast and no matter how big or small or how this goes, I at least I can look back and be like I I I had an idea, I chased it, and I, at least I started it, and I've learned from it, no matter what. Whether this becomes successful or not, I've learned a bunch of lessons and a bunch of skills and met amazing people. So no no, no regrets. No regrets right there. But yeah, do you have, do you have any take? I know I just went on a rant. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, you probably covered every point and above that uh, I could have ever thought of. But, um, oh, yeah. Alright, for sure. I agree. I can't really I can't say anything about restating what you just said, so For sure, for sure. So yeah. that's a quote one last time. The only thing worse than death is a regret filled coffin. So take that. Whatever you do, that information is on you. Make sure you go pursue your passions. Do it for the love. Do it for the value that you're giving to others. And stay tuned for the next segment. Welcome, last ep- uh, whoa, last episode. No, welcome, <laughs> last segment of this week's episode. So we have been covering some current events. So the next article we want to talk about, I found this to be really funny as a fairly new Apple uh, user, right? So uh, this article is from March second, so a couple of days ago. Apple to settle. Apple will settle a class action lawsuit over slowing down iPhones. The agreement calls for eligible owners to get $25 per device with an overall payout of up to $500 million from the mega giant Apple. So I'm sure all you Apple users have known, right? I mean, everyone has known that Apple's been slowing down their phones pretty much like after every update or like after every new version, right? That's how they get you to keep buying new ones, right? So you slow down the older one, oh, now you need a new iPhone and then you do it. It is, it's, yeah. So um, the article continues, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Article continues, Apple has agreed to pay as much as $500 million to settle a class action lawsuit that claims the company slowed down the performance of older iPhones to spur customers to buy new ones. The potential settlement could put a cap on one of the biggest legal challenges involving the Cupertino California company's smartphone since its 2007 debut. Apple has agreed to pay owners $25 in cash per iPhone with the company's payout totaling a minimum of $310 million, but not exceeding $500 million. So in between $310 to $500 million. The per iPhone payout could change depending on the number of eligible devices. Apple said in 2017 that a software update introduced at the start of the year reduced the performance of older models. And then it but comes- does it does it like explain where I can get my money? For um, having to suffer. <laughs> so you have to be eligible. It says the settlement covers U.S. owners of the iPhone six and up, pretty much. That Bro, ran- uh, damn, I had I had one. I iPhone six. Okay, it says iPhone six, six plus, six s, six s plus, and SE devices that ran the iOS ten point two point one updates or later, as well as the iPhone seven, seven plus SE models that ran on iOS eleven point two updates and later. And then the article continues, you know, criticizing Apple and and all that stuff. So I found that to be really, uh, really funny because I know this has been going on for a couple of years now. Um, people first people suspected it, then it was pretty much like fact. Like people just knew that after every year, um, like the latest, like after every year a new version, like the old, the next older version, you know, starts to slow down. Yeah, it was like, come on, go away, stop. Yeah, working. 
Exactly. So like as a I was a very Android I was a you know heavy Android user. We were fine, bro. <laughs> introduce introduce, <laughs> introduce a new galaxy. Our galaxy is still fine. Like mine was perfectly fine. But um, you know, that's how Apple keeps you. But like now I'm team Apple and I they won me off of convenience, but I'm still Welcome. I'm still team Welcome. Android at heart. Still team Welcome. Android at heart. Phone, and I'm phone proud. Degrees, but I'm proud, Team Android at heart. But um, well, enjoy your blue messages and the gifts you can send. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, they just went in convenience. But like I said, I just thought that to, I thought that to be a very interesting and funny um article. So, um, and then plus there were just like leaks of I think like new iPhone twelve that came out. It had like four cameras and things like that. So, um, that's that's just in the news of Apple. Any takes on that? Um, hey, I been known that they were uh doing this nonsense like I, i've always knew that every time uh a new iphone came out they were gonna slow years slow years down or whenever they had a whole what is the, I, the ios the software update every time i knew they had one coming out I was like yeah my phone's better it's about time i start switching you know mm -hmm. i don't know i gotta do something to like offload the uh the strain on my phone battery and whatnot so yeah. i knew but yeah for sure But hey, I mean, um, I think one thing to just take away from that is just a simple business model, right? If you have a business, whatever you're doing, um, I think just one thing to keep in mind is that you always want to keep your... The, the way they win is that because they're always producing something new, right? Every year they, cre they create a new product. So it's an updated product, upgraded product. It's new. It's flashy, right? So they, they keep the hype going. So they make you buy their product. Um, and I just think as a business owner, whatever you're selling, it's important that you're actually kind of using that same tactic, um, similar to even with content, right? I always preach, you know, I'm gonna do it. I have to make a separate video about this, but just content is king, right? And I was watching a video on, on Instagram and they were saying how, you know, in order, pretty much in order to keep your page alive and to, you know, you know, connect with people, you have to always have new updated content, um, new updated relevant content. Right. So that's another reason why we do current events, because we have to keep it updated and new. Right. So whatever you're selling, you can't keep. Right. If you have um, say you're, you're, if you're selling shirts, right, maybe it's cool to have one design, but you can't have one design for a whole year, two years. You got to give them something new. Right. If you're creating content, if you have a YouTube page, you can't just have like three videos up, you know, made in one year. If people want to see your content. You have to keep giving them something new, keep giving them something to look forward to. So I think that's just something like that's probably a positive thing that you could take whatever you're doing, like whatever content you make, whatever distribution you have, whatever business you have. If you always like if you're a photographer, right? Come on. If you have a photography page, you have to make sure that you're posting pictures, take pictures, post. You always have to be creating something new just so people can, you know, people can live, live off of and they can see that you're doing work um if you're selling any type of devices don't slow down people's devices or you can and just get you know pay out later you know who am i but I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean hey they honestly like we we don't got anybody to blame but ourselves for stuff like that going on because everybody it was tmi phone from the jump and like in terms of technology or like phones Having the latest iPhone was the biggest flex of, uh, you know, still is. It's the equivalent of having a Louis, Louis Vuitton or, or or Gucci belt or something. So uh, we got nobody to blame but ourselves for the reason why they can't afford to slow us down. Yeah, because people are gonna buy them anyway, no matter what they, no matter what you know what I mean. They, the people were not like. But the thing is though, it's it's funny because people are like so team iPhone. Like that's mainly in America though. Like if you go overseas, um, Apple's not as big as people generally think it is. Like if you go overseas, Android <laughs> runs the world, right? But um, you know that's a different topic for a different day. Um, and that's why I'm so team Android because you know it's for the people. Um, Android Apple is just for clout. Um, uh huh. Uh huh. Go on. Okay. It's a fact, but I'm still. Uh, uh -huh. It's a fact, but like I said, different topic for a different day. Um. So if you're an eligible person, maybe you'll get your twenty five bucks. If not, then just go ahead and go buy a new device and be part of their game. <laughs> but for real. But that concludes that article, and for our last article for today, Edom has that. So what we got? So, what's going on, which, honestly, I don't go shopping for uh, food often. I might 
I might need to start doing that because of what's going on. But uh, there's a New York plastic bag ban. Mm. It's been in effect for as of us recording it. it as of the recording date of this episode, it's been in effect for five days. Okay. So um, March 1st, they, New York State passed a... Well, it, I guess it went into effect uh, the law banning single-use plastic bags and businesses uh, can no longer have them, I guess. Um, no, no, no longer have single-use plastic bags and customers who need bags can either buy, you know, the store plastic bags that you can reuse or you pay 10 cents per paper bag. Mm. And I was on the phone with you, like I said earlier, and I got to the checkout line, and I did, honestly, I did not know where to keep any of my things. <laughs> usually, there's usually like three rings, like um, three little prong things that they have their plastic bags connected to, and I kid you not, I scanned my item, and I put it on the wrong side of the belt, because I was like, yo, where, what the hell? Like, the whole thing. The whole thing was gone. Yeah. The whole thing was gone. It was just a flat, empty, like, metal, like, metal countertop. And I was like, yo, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, yeah. And then I completely forgot, like, yo, they really out here banning plastic bags. Like, yes, sir. I saw a post about it on, on like, uh, I saw, um, like, a tweet-type post about it on Instagram talking about um, how your plastic bags that you have in your house are now worth something in New York. I saw a, a video of a dude with a reusable bag that said Louis Vuitton on it. it was like, that was funny. But, like, it, it's crazy how, like, that stuff really doesn't, like, it, it didn't hit me until, like, yo, like, I'm in the supermarket and I walked up in here with no plastic bags. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I'm kind of walking there feeling naked, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. So I, like, they said... I, at the end of the checkout, like they added this new feature where at the end they asked you, like, yo, how many paper bags did you use? And and they said, um, like, there's a fee for it. And I was like, yo, yo y'all got me. Like, y'all don't know who I am. I'll hold this. I'll walk out the store for it. <laughs> I, I, I ain't paying no, I ain't paying anything for no new, like, no plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But I think it's just pretty wild that, like, yo, like, this is actually really happening since, like, plastic bag. Um, the pollution and all the waste is like it's been a big issue it's been a big topic of like discussion for the longest you know since people really started cracking down on it and um, I guess to be specific more specific it doesn't affect I don't know what constitutes as a single use plastic bag other than I'm um, pretty sure like food spots and uh, and supermarkets yeah. So I guess I, I don't. I, I mean I can't speak on it too much, but those are the first single use spots that come to my mind. So uh, I, I wonder why they say. I mean, yeah, single use. I mean, if you have those plastic bags, bro, like at they're least not they're not single. They're not single bags. use, bro. You <laughs> take the plastic bags, right? You take all the bags, you put them in one bag, and you put them in a bigger bag, and then you put it under your sink. Everybody knows that, right? And then whenever you need smaller bags, if, right? If you need to even tie your hair, right? You gotta tie your shoes, bro. You got a bag. Like those are not single use. Those are the greatest assets that we have. But I mean, hey. Good thing I'm not in New York right now, so I still have a bunch of small little plastic bags. But well, all you guys in New York, I feel for you. Um, I guess, like, I mean, yeah, pollution, right? That's a good thing. I mean, to stop pollution, right? That's a good thing. Um, make, you know, save waste and all that good stuff. But um, I guess the convenience, man, like, it's, it just you just can't be that convenient. But then again, if you think of places like BJ's, right? At BJ's, you don't have plastic bags. They just like take the the crates that the food comes yeah. in. Those like cardboard crates, and um, you just stick the food in there. Which I always thought was a pretty um smart idea. But you know, it's a little bit different at BJ's because everything's wholesale, and so everything's bigger and stuff like that. Oh, um, that's what we shot, boy. Yeah, but um. But BJ's, like, I, I've always thought that was smart, so I don't know if it's really that big of a deal. I don't know if every, you know, store, not every store, obviously, but if more supermarkets can start working like that because you can recycle those crates and stuff. But, hey. I think the biggest pain is just, like I said, walking in there, forgetting to bring your um, plastic bag. Because I used to work at Stop and Shop. 
Yeah. And, you know, we had, um, a, like, three years back, we had these these big 10-cent, like, they're plastic, you know, they're kind of reusable. I mean, I'd say they were, like, depending on how you use them, they were good for maybe 10 to 20 uses yeah. before you ripped a hole in it or something. But all the time, you'd see people, like, you'd, it'd be at the end of the belt, and then people would, like, I kid you not, like, every six out of ten persons would be like, yo, I bought these, I bought this last time I was here, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot to bring it. And, um, uh, now, now you're like, you're seeing, you're like, I think, you think about it, you're like, wow, this is completely gone. And at, at a point, I think my, probably my second year there, we had like a crazy shortage of paper, of uh, plastic bags. We had no more stop and shop bags. We had to, I think they had a, an employee run to like restaurant depot or run to, <laughs> run to, I think, BJ's or Costco's to just buy plastic bags for <laughs> customers. At a point, we were using corn bags. I'm like, weak. the yellow bags that you put your corn in, yeah. that's what we were giving customers. <laughs> and and we had paper bags, but none of the customers wanted. And the paper yeah. bags were free. So yeah, if you yeah. needed a paper bag, and that joint came in in four and three different sizes, small, medium, large. I'm going to pack your stuff in your paper bags and you'd be on your way. Yeah. Now it's to the point where I didn't see not one big paper bag there. I got there. They gave everybody the medium sized paper bags. You need a paper bags and you have to pay for it. That is just ridiculous. And to me, it's crazy how like it's, it's ironic. It's really ironic and crazy how things work. Cause now the thing that like, was free and nobody wanted it like nobody wanted it when it was free back then now it's the thing like yeah this is all we got and you're gonna have to pay for it on top of yeah. on top of um it, yeah so i don't know that's that's just it's crazy how life works got it got it you know, I, I, I agree bro and um but my my idea i guess um I think one time I was in Canada and we went fruit shopping and they didn't have any plastic bags and they just made us buy tote bags. Um, I know that's what a lot of places do. I guess like that's the point of, you know, reducing, you know, those reusable ones and just like going to use a tote bag. Um, I think tote bags are kind of cool. I think the only thing is that you just have to remember to bring them, right? Maybe I don't like, I guess I don't do food shopping that, that often, but like it would just, like you said, it would just be so easy for me to just go to the store and then be like, ah crap like i i forgot my my tote bag um but again like in the same concept of bj's like i just feel like if they used to just supply something else um like boxes or something like that that'll be fine but if it's like a tote bag like the use of it is the same like you could bring if you have pretty big you know durable ones sure you could pay a little bit of money for it but then if they're like durable and reusable you bring them every time you go shopping you just throw all your groceries in and instead of you know having to do you know you know having like you know 10 on each arm cuz obviously we only do one trip right if you if you yeah, of course right only one one trip's only for the grocery so instead of having 10 on each arm um now you just have like two huge tote bags right and you just carry those and just go hope your way um you know into the crib with the groceries um but I mean, hey, yo, uh, I, I guess it's, you know, it's good for the long run. But down here, I still got my plastic bag. So the next time I go to New York, um, I'm going to just, you know, write my signature on them and just sell them on the street, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> because to be honest, if you guys don't have them, I'm, I'm, I'm rich. So like that post you said, they're like, yo, that plastic bag filled with plastic bags, filled with plastic bags under my sink is now worth $11,000. Like... That's true. Like I got, I got gold under my sink right now. <laughs> I got gold in there, so um, that's all I have to do. I'm gonna just start selling plastic bags when I get to New York. I'll just make some money back. But um, I really gotta think twice before I try to throw anything out, yeah. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> you have to use them to the to its fullest. Nah, yeah, that's like that's to me that's like a really crazy mental thing, cause bro. I really be throwing these things out. One of them, sticky, <laughs> throw it out. Yeah. Bro, sticky, don't look cool. It's too crumpled for my liking. <laughs> dusty, throw it out, throw it out, throw it out. Like, nah. Yeah. Like, but the thing is, you said that they have them, but you have to pay for them now? So it's not like they don't have them at all. No. Paper bags. All I have are paper bags. And you have to pay for the paper pay bags. for those. Oh, so I thought I thought they so, still had the plastic nah, ones, but now you have bro, to pay for them. Because no. that was a thing for they a bit. absolutely none. 
Got it, got it. Cause I think for I think a little while ago, I don't remember if it was in New York, but I think they did something where they were trying to charge you like five cents per bag. If that wasn't in New York, then somewhere else that I went food shopping, but they did that. It was like five cents per plastic per plastic bag that you um that you have your groceries with to discourage you from doing that. That might have been in the same place in Canada. Um but like that's also to just encourage getting like, you know, reusable totes. Um but I think, I think, like I said, I think the tote bag is just a good idea. You just have to remember to bring it every time you go shopping. It's not the worst thing. Perfect. The worst thing. Wait, don't Canada got, don't they got the milk gallons, like milk? In, and, in pack, in, um, in, in, bags? in bags. Yeah, they got bags of milk. Yeah. They got a problem up there? Yeah, it is weird. It's weird, but shout out to Canada. Um, <laughs> It's, it's just very, milk in a, in a plastic bag just looks weird, but um, milk is milk, yo. Shout out to all the milk drinkers. Um, yeah, man, I think that uh, that covers all the, the articles we wanna talk about for this episode. Um, so we'll throw this episode up as soon as possible. We're looking forward, we have a very interesting spring lineup coming up. There's a lot of opportunities to network. So looking to have some great guests on the show. Um, yeah, man. So make sure you check us out on all our platforms. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. The TikTok is up. So I'll have to, I'll have to start posting more videos, but we are on TikTok. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. Thank you for all the love, all the feedback. To all my listeners, international, can't wait to see it grow. Um, like I said, shout out to the Thailand. I don't know who you are, but thank you for listening and make sure that you share with your peoples out there in Thailand. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace.